everybody, Simon back again. We're going to start a new story, but I haven't got a title yet. So I'm going to call it Beauty and the Beast for now, but that might change. So this story, uh, based in Thailand again, based in Patea, um, and the characters are called Aussie Dave and Giab. That's J E A B, Giab. So, the backstory um, I met Ozzy Dave in a bar a couple of days before the launch of my first job managing a bar in Soy BJ. Now, Ozzy Dave from Australia. Um, Six foot tall, six pack, athletic. They just hate them. Really good looking guy. I hate them more. Um, one of those guys that he could be in a bar and he'd be in centre of attention. He was funny. He was just a really, really nice guy. And he had loads of money. Now, in Australia, years before, his father had uh, bought a, an office block that was half built, that the um, company went bust. And he demolished it and built uh, a, a 15 floor, 60 apartments, condos in Sydney, in Darling Harbour, I believe. From his money and savings and things, he built this and he didn't sell them, he rented them out, all these apartments, for a few years. Sadly, he passed away. Dave, only son, um, inherited it. Plus, he was uh, in the bar business. He was managing um, a huge, successful bar in Sydney. And he'd had enough of the bars. He had 60 condos, high-end, Income, you can imagine, that was a lot of money coming in every month. He was made for life, he was set up. And he'd done a couple of trips to Thailand and here he was in Thailand. For six months, he was considering buying a bar, a big bar in Walking Street and setting it up. And I happened to be, I can't remember, in a bar, I think it was Second Road, at the top of Soy 7, on the other side in the complex, I think I'm, it bumped into him there. Um, and the reason we bumped into each other, prior to me starting the bar manager job, bar manager job I'd hired a, a bigger motorcycle because I wanted to do a bit of touring. And I hired a Honda 750, I think it was, Shadow, or 700 Shadow, like a chopper. And it was noisy, a bit like a Harley, you know. I, get it out of my system and I'd hired this for a few weeks and I just handed it back and he pulled up on the same the bike next to the bar I was sat in and came in and we got chatting about the bike um, and then just got chatting and hit it off such a lovely guy now uh, that was our first encounter um, and he told me about his plans to get a bar and I told him, well, I was just about to start managing. And I invited him to the bar when it was opening and stuff. And uh, actually exchanged phone numbers. We got on so well. Now, every he had a routine. He was staying. And again, hopefully you guys can put this right. But he was staying in a hotel, I believe, on Soy 2 um, Beach Road. Soy 2, Soy 4. Somewhere up there in a hotel, I think it might have been the Sabai Lodge, but he had a room, a luxury room next to the pool. Um, and he'd got that room for a deal for six months and he just loved it there. But in the mornings he'd go down to the, the beach, have a swim and then have a massage from the old wrinkly cow on the beach. Let's call her that. Every day he did that, that was his routine. He always wore swimming shorts, multicolored, sort of down to his knees, and a multi 
coloured matching or similar type vest um, and he had deck shoes like slip on shoes and that's, he lived in that day and night those sort of clothes never dressed up never showed that he had money never had any jewellery that I saw but physique he was fit good looking guy um, with money oh Thai girl's dream so he hadn't I'd asked him on and a, a couple of times we we bumped into each other and we met for drinks before I started managing the bar over those couple of days and he'd never bothered with Thai girls he wasn't interested he was a single successful guy but he didn't even play with them the girls he didn't dabble at all which I found quite strange you know considering I did wonder if he was you know um, maybe looking for guys but later became apparent he wasn't so but he was there and he was seriously looking at a big bar and because I was gonna just about to start managing this bar he was really into learning finding out about this bar I was about to take on so he, maybe that's why the interest in me and the friendship I don't know but a couple of days later I opened my bar um, we did a soft launch for the first week and Dave came in he came in every every night um, and we got friendlier and friendlier and he became one of my best friends while he was there in Thailand um, in that first six months and he gave me quite a bit of advice as well so really nice guy now literally three weeks later very oh, strange he walked into a go-go bar um, I believe somewhere around Soy Post Office around there and it was something to do with cats I don't know if it was called Pussy A Go-Go or Cats A Go-Go or something like that but he he went into this go-go bar Soy 13 one somewhere around there near the beach walked in and this is how I was told and found out um, and he explained to me I saw a girl on the stage and that thunderbolt we've seen so much and heard so much hit him there was a girl on stage long black hair like most of them um, that go-go bar back in those days tended to be sometimes no clothes on some clothes anyway this girl he, he just dropped his mouth open and immediately fell for her instantly it doesn't happen very often but and this is a sensible guy he just bang he went straight to the mama's hand apparently got her off the stage started buying a drink and getting chatting and they hit it off immediately now this girl was named Jeab as I said J-E-A-B she'd been working in this go-go bar for about three four months prior to that she worked in Bangkok in a go-go bar and prior to that she did, wasn't in the industry so she'd only been in the industry six months and came from a poor family no money a farming family Isan um, near Konken but just sort of west a bit uh, east east from Konken Anyway, he got her down, bought her drinks, absolutely fell for her. Just clicked, immediately clicked. And this is a guy that's worth millions and sensible and hadn't really dabbled with girls. What did he do? He immediately called the Mama San over and asked how much, not only to take her out of the bar, but to take her out of the bar forever just like that and I asked him so much about this when he told me I couldn't believe it but 
the mama san said no 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 when i got the owner it was a thai owner um guy came mama san came mama san spoke good english luckily for dave and he told this thai owner that he was taking this girl Giab, out of the bar for good and the thai man was no 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 dave <laughs> put his hand in his pocket and said to the guy and he counted out 50,000 baht. Now back 15 years ago that was, oh I'm hopeless on maths, um, it was a lot of money <laughs> and it was something like a thousand plus dollars. 75 baht to the pound back then so maybe not maybe it was less but anyway 50,000 baht said to the guy I'm taking this girl out of your bar for good 50,000 baht and the guy said no I'm not doing it and Dave said well I'm taking her out of the bar and she's not coming back so you're either going to take 50,000 baht or I'll keep it and we're gone <laughs> at that point apparently and Dave he was a great business guy it and he was a strong, strong guy, and it was just something about his way, his demeanour. The guy took the 50,000 baht. Dave got up, didn't even pay for the two drinks he'd had. <laughs> Said, bye. Sent Jeb off to get dressed, get her stuff. Out the door. He just, yeah, you know, I don't think he'd told Jeb, I'm, I'm getting you out of this bar, you're not working again. Yep, he did it. He took her straight, 10 minutes in there, spotted the girl, right, talk, buy her out the bar. He didn't have to give them the bar money. She could have just left that job, plain and simple. Um, her English was not brilliant, but basic, very basic, but she understood enough what was going on. But he just, through 50,000 bar, took her out of the bar. Headed home with her back to his hotel and had a night of aerobics. Let's put it that way. Very pleased with himself and totally hooked on this girl. He then, the next day, got her to get from her room, all her stuff. She was sharing a room with three or four other girls. Pulled her stuff out of the room, moved her into his hotel room. Total control. Now, this must have been a huge shock for her. She's just been whipped out of the bar, took out of her room. He's given her some money. He didn't tell me how much. He's explained that he really likes her and he wants to get to know her and she's staying with him and he will get her English lessons immediately he's on to the case and yeah that was it it's just unbelievable I've never heard of anyone doing this before just that's the one out let's and yeah luckily for him he was a great looking guy and every girl would have said yes she was quite tall um really really pretty really pretty girl and she wasn't cheeky or she, she was qu quiet but really nice really nice girl he i don't know how he'd spotted her but he got really lucky with jab very lucky Over the coming days, he spent all his time with her, 24 hours a day with her, walking around, eating, seeing the sights around Patea, and he actually uh, found a lady, I think she was American, she was working at the local school, one of the schools, she was teaching English, and he hired the lady, again, throwed money at her, that after her school day um, or before or at weekends so many hours a week private tuition 
with Giab, whether it be the hotel or this lady's home. And he paid this lady to start teaching Giab English. <clears throat> and he threw some serious money at this woman apparently as well. So probably another 20, 30,000, but the woman didn't say no, it was good money. So that's it, he's got the girl. And he's now getting her taught English. Hmm, just like that. So that's the backstory of Dave. And that's the introduction of Giab. Why the title possibly Beauty and the Beast? Time will, time will tell. I will catch you on episode two. How do they get on? Bye for now.